In the 21st century, a new great game is unfolding. It's not being played with armies or navies, but with elements pulled from the earth. A silent, high-stakes conflict is being waged for control over a handful of materials that will define our future. These are the critical minerals, the building blocks of our modern world. They're in our smartphones, our electric cars, our green energy systems and our most advanced defences. For decades, the key players in this resource race have been global superpowers like the United States, China and the mineral-rich nations of Africa. But that might be about to change. The global scramble for these minerals has a surprising new contender that could shift the entire balance of power. While the world's eyes are on the usual suspects, a small island nation, known more for pristine beaches and reggae music, may be sitting on a jackpot of rare earths and uranium. This is the story of how Jamaica could become a major player in the mining world and the immense environmental risks that come with it. It's a story of a nation at a crossroads where a potential economic miracle could come at a catastrophic ecological cost. To grasp what's happening in Jamaica, you first have to understand the global picture. Critical minerals isn't just an industry buzzword, it's a matter of geopolitical necessity. This group of elements, including the 17 rare earth elements, plus others like lithium, cobalt and uranium, are the lifeblood of technology. Without them, the green energy transition stalls. Wind turbines can't spin, EV batteries can't charge, and the complex electronics that run our digital lives and national security simply don't exist. The problem? The supply of these minerals is anything but secure. For years, one country has held a commanding, near-monopolistic control over the market, China. Beijing's long-term strategy to dominate not just the mining, but more importantly, the processing of rare earths has given it powerful leverage on the world stage. At one point, China controlled over 90% of the global supply. And while that number has come down, its dominance is a massive point of anxiety for Western governments. We saw a preview of this power when China restricted REE exports in the past, sending shockwaves through global tech supply chains. This has kicked off a desperate worldwide search for other sources. The United States, the European Union and their allies are pouring billions into friend shoring, building secure supply chains with allied nations to break free from this dependency. They are scouring the globe from the Arctic to the ocean depths, looking for the next big deposit. And that frantic search has led them unexpectedly to the shores of the Caribbean. For nations that have these minerals, the opportunity is monumental. It's a chance to attract massive investment and gain a new seat at the global table. But it's also a huge risk. The history of mining is littered with cautionary tales of environmental ruin, social upheaval and the resource curse, where mineral wealth leads not to prosperity, but to corruption and conflict. This is the challenge now facing Jamaica. For 70 years, Jamaica's mining story has been about one thing. Bauxite, the ore used to make aluminum. The island's signature red earth has been dug up, processed and shipped around the world, leaving a complicated legacy of economic benefit and environmental harm. For decades, a secret lay hidden in that bauxite and its waste product, red mud, trace amounts of rare earth elements. Japanese researchers even confirmed their presence during a period of market volatility, but extracting them was too complex and expensive. It was an interesting footnote, but not a game changer. Until now. Recent, more intensive exploration has revealed something new. 
The real treasure might not be in the waste of old mines, but in untouched deposits with concentrations high enough to change the economic equation. Two key players are at the forefront of this. The first is Geophysics Jamaica Lennardeed, a local company that has been conducting a technologically advanced mineral survey of the island. After analyzing over 40,000 samples, they identified a massive soil anomaly for rare earth elements covering roughly 100 square kilometers in the parish of St. Elizabeth. They follow holes up with drilling, and every single one of their 44 drill hit near-surface mineralized soils rich in REEs. This wasn't just a trace amount. It was what appeared to be a vast and accessible deposit. Initial estimates suggest at least 50 million tons of mineralized material, which could make it one of North America's largest rare earth discoveries in the last two decades. At the same time, another company, TR Mining, part of the American-based Royalty Management Holdings, was making its own discovery. The company has a lease on a 25 square kilometer stretch of coastline with black sand. These sands were already known to hold industrial minerals like titanium and iron ore. But a new sampling program in mid-2025 reportedly revealed significant concentrations of high-value rare earth elements, the kind essential for the powerful magnets in EV motors and wind turbines. The CEO of Royalty Management, Thomas Sauvé, noted the potential simplicity of the mining method as a key advantage. Unlike hard rock mining, which requires blasting, this deposit is sand that can be easily excavated. This could position the project as a very low-cost source on the global market. The company is now working to finalize mining permits with a stated goal of potentially beginning commercial extraction as early as 2026, though this ambitious timeline depends heavily on approvals and market conditions. Suddenly, Jamaica has what could be two world-class rare earth projects representing two different types of deposits. The quiet island nation has been thrust almost overnight onto the world's resource map. But rare earth elements are only half the story. Another, even more controversial element is part of Jamaica's future. Uranium. The conversation around uranium in Jamaica is less about mining it and more about using it. While an international report from the 1970s noted some geological favorability for uranium deposits, no commercial mining has ever happened. Instead, the country is making a bold pivot towards nuclear energy. Jamaica's biggest economic weakness has long been the crippling cost of power. The nation relies on imported fossil fuels for nearly 90% of its energy. This means Jamaican homes and businesses pay some of the highest electricity prices in the region. On average, households spend 11% of their income on electricity, triple the average in the United States. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has argued this is the main reason Jamaica's economy is dominated by tourism, as high energy costs make large-scale manufacturing uncompetitive. His proposed solution? A quantum leap into the atomic age. In October 2024, the government signed a landmark agreement with Atomic Energy of Canada Limited, AECL, and Canadian Nuclear Laboratories, CNL. This isn't for building massive traditional nuclear plants, but to explore the feasibility of small modular reactors, or SMRs. These are next-generation reactors that are smaller, can be built in factories, and are designed with enhanced safety features, making them a potential fit for countries with smaller grids like Jamaica. The partnership is focused on research, training for Jamaican scientists, and building a safe regulatory framework with support from the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA. And Jamaica isn't starting from scratch. 
In a fact that surprises many, the island is already home to the Caribbean's only nuclear reactor, a small, slow poke 2 research reactor at the University of the West Indies, which has operated safely since 1984. This four-decade history provides a foundation of local expertise and a culture of nuclear safety. The vision is clear. Use clean, reliable and cheaper nuclear power to slash energy costs, revitalize manufacturing and achieve energy independence. The Canadian partnership aligns Jamaica with a trusted G7 partner known for its commitment to nuclear safety. The dream isn't just for cheaper power, but for an economic rebirth powered by the atom. Here's the promise, a future of economic prosperity and technological advancement. But this is also where the dream collides with the potentially devastating reality. Can an island famous for its natural beauty survive becoming a mining hub? The ghost of Jamaica's past looms large. The bauxite industry, while an economic engine, has left deep scars. Decades of mining have caused significant deforestation, soil erosion and contamination of waterways. The red dust from mining and transport has harmed air quality, with studies suggesting higher rates of respiratory problems in nearby communities. This history is a stark reminder of the true cost of extraction. The risks of the new ventures are just as serious. Rare earth mining is notoriously dirty. The process often uses harsh chemicals that can generate toxic and sometimes radioactive waste. Managing the massive quantities of leftover rock and processing fluids is a huge challenge with the potential for leaks that could poison soil and groundwater for generations. The beautiful landscapes of St. Elizabeth and the pristine coastlines could be forever altered. Then there's the nuclear question. While SMRs are designed to be safer, the fundamental risks of nuclear power remain. The first is long-term radioactive waste disposal, a problem even the most advanced nuclear nations are still grappling with. The second is the risk, however small, of an accident. In a small, densely populated island nation that depends on tourism and agriculture, such an event would be an existential catastrophe. These concerns are not lost on Jamaicans. A robust debate is underway. Opposition leaders have questioned the timeline and cost of nuclear energy, arguing for faster investment in renewables like solar. Environmental groups like the Jamaica Environment Trust point to the 70-year experience with bauxite as a cautionary tale, advocating for stronger regulations. Jamaica's own constitution includes the right to a healthy environment, and the government insists it's committed to upholding this through rigorous environmental impact assessments. The nation is facing a monumental choice. One path leads toward an economic boom fueled by the very elements the world needs for a green transition. The other path warns of irreversible damage to the environment that defines Jamaica's identity. So what does all of this mean for the rest of the world? Jamaica's emergence has the potential to send ripples across the entire geopolitical landscape. A small island nation could become a new power player in the 21st century's great power competition. For the West, a viable source of rare earths in Jamaica would be a massive strategic prize. A friendly, stable and nearby nation offering a significant supply of REEs could be a major breakthrough in the mission to diversify away from China. It could provide a secure source for American and European high-tech industries from defense to EVs, weakening China's strategic hold on these critical materials. The involvement of American-linked companies like Royalty Management Holdings highlights this interest. Its CEO has explicitly mentioned building a US supply chain with Jamaica as a key resource base. On the energy front, Jamaica's nuclear ambitions serve a similar purpose. 
By achieving energy independence, Jamaica would be less vulnerable to price shocks from the global fossil fuel market, often influenced by actors like Russia and OPEC. The partnership with Canada also anchors Jamaica within a Western sphere of influence, creating a model for other developing nations looking to pursue nuclear power responsibly. For Jamaica, this new position offers immense leverage. It could transform the nation from a price taker in the global economy to a strategic partner with something invaluable to offer. This could translate into better trade deals, more foreign investment and a stronger diplomatic voice. It's a chance for Jamaica to redefine its role in the world, not just as a tourist destination, but as a pivotal player in the new technology economy. Jamaica is sitting on a geological lottery ticket that could deliver a quantum leap for its economy, offering a path to industrialization, energy independence and new prosperity. The discoveries of high-grade rare earths and the ambitious push for nuclear power have placed the island at the center of the global critical minerals race. Yet, this opportunity comes with a heavy burden. The promise of wealth is shadowed by the very real threat of environmental ruin, echoing the painful lessons from the island's history with bauxite mining. The decisions made in the coming years about which mines to approve, which regulations to enforce, and how to balance economic ambition with ecological preservation, will have consequences that last for centuries. Jamaica stands at a pivotal moment, a microcosm of the central challenge of our time. How do we power our future without destroying our planet? Will it become a cautionary tale of a paradise lost to the hunger for resources? Or will it write a new playbook, showing how a small nation can leverage its natural wealth to become a giant, all while protecting its precious heritage? The world is watching. What do you think? Is the potential economic reward worth the environmental risk for Jamaica? Can the nation have it both ways? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And for more deep dives into the resources and geopolitics shaping our future, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching 